It looks like we got our guest uh, that is actually on the line with us. And Jersey World, I'll let you do the honors and let you introduce our, our next guest. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor of um, introducing to the sports critic all our fans checking us out tonight live and on the podcast. Second fastest player to 100 sacks behind the late, great Reggie White, three-time Pro Bowl, the 2002 Super Bowl champion, my high school classmate from the great Mount Carmel High School, the sack master himself, number 97, Simeon Rice. How you doing tonight, my man? What's up? What's up, Well, What's good? Yeah. Sam, you got it, fam. Hey, I appreciate you calling in tonight, man. I know you're down there in Clearwater. You're checking the game out. We just want to chop it up with you, man. Appreciate you taking our time. I guess the game on mute. You're telling me right now. I guess the I got game you. on mute. I got you. It's I got good, you. Though. That's you're what's up. Me right now. So introduce <laughs> me. Who am I talking to? Who, introduce everybody. I don't know. I, I got you, family. You tuning in to the Sports Critic, man. I actually co-host the show with my man Drew Patton, aka Furious Styles. We got the <laughs> silent partner chiming in. You know what I'm saying? Working the boards, doing his magic. He may shoot a question or two to you because he absolutely loved the way you guys played defense during your Tampa Bay run. So Sam, we're gonna hop right into it, man. You know, with the lockout, I've had a lot of time to mull over a lot of things. You know, the NFL Network, they've been playing back a lot of different things that we see. And I got to thinking about you, man, and coming out of Illinois, a lot of comparisons to Lawrence Taylor because, obviously, size, speed, ability to get to the quarterback. I just wanted to ask you this, and I've been wanting to ask you this for a while. If you had an opportunity to play in a 3-4 like a DeMarcus Ware, Lamar Woodley, uh, Sean Merriman, what type of numbers do you think you would have put up as opposed to what you did in a, a standard, you know, a 4-3 defensive end? Mm. No, you all right there, huh? Yes. That's a good question. Um, being the fact that, you know, I had to actually beat somebody every play to earn mine, which is a tall task and a tall order. It would have been nice to get a, a, a few freebies a year. You know Ooh. what I mean? Uh, I really can't say. I think I, I mean, who knows, man? You know what I mean? How fun would that have been, though? You know, I, I average, you know, I look at my average. I, I average just about 10, almost 11 a game. I mean, excuse me, a season, you know, going against double teams. So I really can't say, you know what I mean? Um, whew, I wish I would have had that. <laughs> then I would have, you know, but, you know, to, to make up a number is I'd be kind of like, you know, overambitious at this point because I don't, I never had that that situation occurred, you know. I, I wish I would have. <laughs> hey, it's fun to think about, man. I I can, you know I mean? No doubt. Definitely. Well, uh, Simeon, my name is Drew Patton. I'm the host of the show. I'm the sports critic. So uh, ba basically, definitely want to thank you for coming on the show, man. I wanted to ask you, he, he mentioned the, the NFL Network, and, you know, I'm a sports junkie, a football junkie, never played the game, so I respect exactly what you guys do and definitely respect the answer that you just gave. And I was watching the um, series that they do, America's Game, and they kind of chronicled you guys' Super, Ro Super Bowl run from 2002. And, of course, you were there with Tony Dungy. Wanted to ask you what kind of voice really was, because one thing that struck me, uh, and Warren Sapp, I definitely trust what he says, because that guy doesn't sugarcoat it, and I think you know that. But what kind of voice and change of pace was John Gruden for you guys to really help you guys propel you to the Super Bowl, something that you guys fell short under uh, Tony Dungy? Um, you know, it was just, it was a, I, I think if Tony would have stayed another year, he definitely would have uh, rode that, that way to the Super Bowl. We were just ready, to be honest. At that point, we were ready. Uh, Tony had us ready the year prior to, to strike. And John got it done for us because I, I think, you know, just that year, you know, a lot put on a lot's put on it with with coaches. Coaches can only really put a team together. The players have to play. You know, uh, it comes down to that. You know, you can have the best calls in the world, but if your put, team can't execute, then it's, it's kind of irrelevant. Uh, in the NFL, a lot is put on the coaches too much. Too much where it's unfair that they take all of the uh, the blame and uh, and so much of the credit. The plan really comes down to the, really to to the players. I mean that year we were a veteran team and we were ready. It was really we were just ready. We were prepared. 
we uh we've been there before. We lost against Philly so many times. Yeah. In the season, we knew we were special. You know, we knew we were special. I mean, from a defensive side of the ball, you you know, upstairs, we just had so many things working in the right order. You know, at that point in my life, you know, I I literally couldn't be blocked by anybody. You could have brought in the national security, and they would have had a problem <laughs> trying to stop me. I you know. Warren Sapp that year, he was, you know, he, he was doing his thing. You know, my teammate Derek Brooks had a career year. We just had so many guys, uh, Rondé Barber. We had so many guys that was really hitting on all cylinders. You, I mean, we really had an all-star team from a defensive side of the ball. So we were just kind of just, in our minds, it was time for us to really, if we're going to be Hall of Fame players, if we're going to be the true great it was time for us to get it done. You know, we we won the individual awards, all of us. We were a collection of, of individuals that had all said something great. At that time, Warren already had the MVP. Myself had all pros and rookie of the years and awards like that. Derek was, you know, Derek was also an honorable mention before. And it was just the time in our life that, you know, it was just time for us to, to do something magnanimous, and we did it. Absolutely. We're speaking to Simeon Rice, former All-Pro uh, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, ended his career with over 122 sacks, three-time pro-, pro bowler, ended his career with the Indianapolis Colts. So, silent partner, I'm sure you got something for him real quick. Go ahead. Man, I don't even know where to start except for <laughs> just, just praising that defense. It was so amazing. I, if I were to ask a question, I would say, uh, you know, I worked a couple of big, enormous arena shows at what they call the Big Sombrero way back in the day but how cool is it to see your team score a touchdown and have a giant pirate ship fire off six cannons i mean is that something that players ever cared about or because on tv and, and being in the stands it looked like the coolest stadium in the world uh no nah, we didn't really care about that <laughs> fair <laughs> enough fair enough go ahead Jerry dig Moore. that dig that well look sam a lot of people don't really know your story man they don't really know your rise to glory us being, you know, former, you know, high school partners and all of that, I kind of got a little insight on what's going on and how that actually happened. Why don't you tell our listeners out there your story? I mean, coming in as a freshman, 6'3", running back, some fumbling issues, the switch to wide receiver, and then the whole switch to defense where it was a wrap after that. Kind of give us a little insight on how that came to be. Well, you know, coming into Mount Carmel, the real, the short of it is I was a, I came in as a tailback. I was 5'9 my freshman year, growing really fast. By my sophomore year to junior year, I went from 6'2 to 6'4, you know, uh, that leap. Uh, junior year, uh, my soft, freshman sophomore year, played running back. They really wanted me to play receiver. I had really no, zero interest in playing that position. I mean, if you know anything about Mount Carmel High School, we ran the option. <laughs> and uh, our, our featured receiver was tight end, if that was it. They wanted me to play receiver. Uh, wasn't interested in that. Moved me to tight end. Really wasn't really wasn't interested in that, even though they got the ball a little bit more. I had my heart set on being like Walter Payton. My junior, my senior year came around. Coach comes to me and says, okay, sit down. You have an opportunity to be, you know, starter basically or – on defense, or you could be a second string, a third string running back, or since you did what you did last year, you could be a second string tight end. And I'm like, all right, my choice is pretty much made. Well, the defense, it was a wrap. Wow, sounds like an offer you couldn't refuse. So let me ask you this, and Jersey World told me this. This is Drew Patton. Um, he told me that you were a huge Walter Payton fan, and I know that growing up in Chicago, yeah, just about – you, I mean, I was a Walter Payton fan as a kid at myself, so I, I definitely could appreciate that hero worship. But what was one of the things that really got you to playing football? And actually, how in the world did you end up uh, being a running back? Well, I mean, that's all I played. You know, any defense is a whole new phenomenon to me. We all start off doing different things. Uh, I, I had shapes and I was fast. You know, it just kind of was a no-brainer. Played, you know, made all-star teams as running backs as a kid and all of that. And uh, Walter Payton was kind of my inspiration to football. He was my indoctrinator to to one that played the game, and I wanted to be just like him. 
looked up to him, marveled at him, look at the work ethic, all of the, all those contributions that when you're a kid goes into shaping who you are. You know, these kids nowadays look at professional athletes from so many different dynamics. And it's no, no different than it was when I was a kid looking at athletes, you know. But even now, they're even much more glorized in the eyes of, you know, uh, kids because of the fact that, you know, there's so much more commercialing, there's so much more, uh, you know, get so much more FaceTime and things of that nature. So it kind of, it, it, it was my first indication as to what I wanted to do and, and ultimately what I wanted to be. And then, you know, I met Peyton and never forget, the first thing he said to me was like, wow, you know, Simeon, if I had your ability, I'd still be playing this day. It was right before a game when I was playing uh, against the Bears when I was with the Cardinals. And, uh, this was right after my rookie year, and I called home, and I'm like, Ma, I just seen you want to pay me. He said he wish he had the same skills I had, you know, and it was just one of those moments. It was a very humbling moment because this is somebody that I want to be just like. That had to be awesome. That had to be awesome. Now, Sam, I, I remember catching up with you a couple of years ago, man. We had the opportunity to kind of hang out, you and me, some of the MC crew, and you mentioned Lomas Brown when you came in your rookie year and how he actually helped you get to be the dominant pass rusher and just a great defensive end that you ended up becoming. Tell us a little bit about that and then that transformation or that maturation process where you went from being this phenomenal athletic, you know, prodigy to being the defensive end that you ended up becoming. Well, coming in my rookie year, Lom- Lomas Brown was just one of the – I mean, he was he was one of the guys that just made my transition from college to to pro just fantastic. I mean, he was the one. He was an eight-time Pro Bowler. You know, uh, played with Barry many years. Shut down offensive tackle, and uh, I, I got the I got just the the rare ability to be able to go against him every day in practice. And coming in after rookie camp, we had mini camp going in, and literally I'm just blazing around corners, flying around, shaking, stopping, moving, doing all the things that I did that I did to make myself special. And I never forget moments that told me early that you know, to me, you're going to be one of the great ones, especially going against him every day in practice. Um, it was when I first came in the four weeks, I was just flying by him. I never forget. <laughs> and it just seemed like the closer they got to camp, it stopped. And I literally couldn't get by this man for like, like a – it was like it's surreal because that never happened to me in my life where I couldn't just race by someone. And this dude literally in practice blocked me for like a month and a half. To, it seemed like two months where I literally couldn't even do anything against this man. Wow. And I was like oh, – it, it, but we worked hard every day. Every day was – one of those moments that I look, I always look forward to going against him, you know, uh, because I knew it was making me better. Absolutely. And we battled, and we battled, and we battled, and, and it's just like from one from in, one individual to uh, uh, to he was a future Hall of Famer, and I'm like I got the ability to go against this every day in practice, and it was all the ultimate blood and guts match every day, and it was all respect. No one ever called feelings. We just knew we were two hardworking individuals that took pride in doing what we did. And I would say after that two-month period, it's like something happened. It's like a switch hit. And it was like at this point, it was literally nothing he could really do with me. He, and he would tell me, and he's like, man, Sam, you, you're on that level now. Like, And this is like all in my rookie year. It, it, I grew up so much looking back, and that one year was ridiculous. Absolutely. So, it was fun. So going against a guy like that, I was so much more prepared for going against guys on the regular, day in and day out. 